Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my gluten-free teriyaki chicken. And most of the ingredients are gluten-free to begin with. The only kind of concern is the teriyaki sauce itself, which I'll show you how to make. And you can make this recipe and serve it over rice, but today I'm serving it with noodles. And this is a package that I got at my local Costco, so it's a very large package. And it's gluten-free ramen noodles. And they come in little cakes that look like ramen noodles, because they are. So depending on how many people you're serving, I figure you know, one, one cake of noodles is about one per person. So today I'm going to be using about three, just because I'm making a double batch today. So I'm going to set my noodle cakes over there, but I just wanted to show you that this is what the package looks like. I don't actually know if it comes in a smaller package. I've only ever seen it at Costco in this size, which is a 12 pack. And they're millet and brown rice noodles. And then I've got a big pot of water. I'm gonna get on to low. Now for the chicken and, and vegetables itself, you can put whatever you want. You don't even have to put chicken in. In fact, today I've got two bags, and these are quart size bags of cooked chicken. And these were in my freezer. And I don't know about you, but if I ever find a, something like chicken on sale and I don't wanna eat it all, I'll cook all of it and then chop it up and then put it in freezer bags in the freezer. And then you've got a really good portion of your dinner already done. So I took these out of the freezer yesterday and they are nice and thawed. And I will probably pan fry them a little bit just to get a little bit of color, but you don't even have to do that. Again, you could make this a vegetarian and not put any meat in at all. And then I've got some yellow squash, carrots and celery, a little bit of broccoli, red pepper. I've got some green onions for garnish. The first thing I wanna work on is the sauce, just to get all of the little bits out of the way. So in this measuring cup, I've got a half a cup of Bragg's Aminos, and that is kind of a soy sauce replacement that is gluten-free. I find that it's on the salty side. So I usually dilute it by half with water. So I've got one cup total. If you use a different brand of gluten-free soy sauce, you might not need to dilute it like I do. So this is to taste. So I've got that all ready, and then I'm just gonna mix my other sauce ingredients in here. I've got about five garlic cloves. Also, this is to taste. And then I've got some fresh ginger here. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but it comes in kind of a little branchy looking thing, and then you can just break off some little knobs. Again, this is to taste. And if you can't find or you don't have any fresh ginger, then you can use powdered ginger. So I just take my knife and peel the skin off. I usually cut off the end here where it's kind of dried out. Whenever ginger is in season or on sale and you can get a really good deal, I will buy it and do exactly this. I will peel it and leave it in about chunks like this and then put them all in a freezer bag in the freezer. So I'm aiming for one to two tablespoons of fresh ginger and then about the same with garlic. So I've got my garlic here. You could also use garlic powder in place of the fresh garlic if you wanted to as well. And then I'm just going to mince my garlic and my ginger. You could grate it. You could grate the ginger or you could even grate them both. But I find that mincing is just as good, fast and easy. And then I can get them both minced at the same time. So there goes all of my garlic, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my ginger. And you know, this recipe, it really comes together pretty quickly. I would say the longest part of this is just getting everything ready to go. But usually, kind of stir fries like this, which this isn't really a stir fry, but usually dishes like this, they don't take very long to cook and throw together. 
So there's my ginger and my garlic in with my soy sauce and water. I've got one teaspoon of red chili flakes. I've got two teaspoons of sesame oil. So I've got two teaspoons of rice vinegar. Now this recipe originally calls for brown sugar. I don't use brown sugar. So I've got two thirds cup of honey and then I've got, oh, about two teaspoons of molasses in with my honey already. And that's to give it the flavor that brown sugar would give this recipe. And again, I'm making a double batch today. So I will put a recipe for a single batch in the description box below. And then just very carefully stir this together. I always like to get my sauce ready first. That way it has a little bit of time to sit together and kind of get the flavors all together. And if I'm using fresh ginger and fresh garlic, I like them to kind of soak in the sauce as well before I'm ready to cook it. And it also gives my honey a chance to dissolve in here and it would be the same with brown sugar. So I'm gonna set that aside and then I also have another one cup of water and a quarter cup of cornstarch that will make a slurry and that will help thicken our sauce. And because it is one cup of water, it will dilute your sauce a little bit. So if you find that you've made it a little bit too spicy or too sweet or something like that, you do have a chance to dilute it a little bit. And then I've got some green onions here for garnish. I'm gonna get those cut up while I'm cutting up my vegetables. There's my green onions for garnish over here. And then I've got a bowl here to just put in my cut up vegetables as I cut them up. My broccoli's already cut up. So I've got three celery sticks, a couple of carrots, and to make it fancy, I like to cut things on kind of a diagonal. Kind of gives it that flair that Chinese takeout would give you. And then if you have a carrot that is really big at one end, I'll cut it in half. Carrots go in there. And I really like this recipe with zucchini, but yellow squash is what I found at the store. So that's what I'm using. And then I usually cut it in half and then in half again just because they're a little bit bigger pieces to begin with. Even though they're softer and they cook a lot faster, it's not such a big bite of squash. And I think one squash will be enough, considering I kind of want equal amounts of all of my vegetables. So there we go. And then I'll probably maybe just use half of this red pepper, but we'll see. Maybe I'll use all of it. Might as well. These seeds are just going everywhere. And then I like to cut my pepper in strips and then cut it again on diagonal like everything else. And if my chicken wasn't already cooked, I would have my chicken cooking right now while I'm cutting up all of my vegetables. keep trying to decide if I'm going to get out some frozen peas to throw in here with my vegetables. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, there we go. Nothing to it at all. I'm going to bring everything a little bit closer except for my garnish. I am going to get my slurry ready for my sauce now. So to my one cup of water, Again, this is a quarter cup of cornstarch. And then we just want to make a slurry. Of course, it all just kind of goes everywhere. And then I'll come back to that and stir it if the cornstarch kind of settles to the bottom. I like to use a skillet that is kind of deep. That's kind of like a bowl. Of course, you could use a wok. But I'm going to turn it on about medium high heat. I've got a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in here. Once the oil is hot, my pan is ready. I'm gonna dump in all of my vegetables. I'm 
not adding any salt and pepper to my vegetables. My sauce will be salty enough. And just saute these as much as you'd like them to be done. I like them to be sauteed, but I still like them to have a little bit of bite. While my vegetables are sauteing, I'm going to turn up the heat on my water. Get that up to high. I decided to go with four noodle cakes. For the amount of chicken and vegetables I got, I think four will be perfect. And you might be thinking what I'm thinking, that my pan is not big enough, but we'll see. I decided to get my stock pot out. And now that my water is up to a boil, I'm gonna just drop in my, my noodle cakes. Once my oil in my pan is hot, I'm gonna add in all of my cooked chicken. I just want a little bit of color on this. And once it looks like this, I'll take it out of the pot and get started on my sauce. I like to use tongs for my noodles so they are all breaking up and not being one big clump. And once they're almost done, I'm going to drain them in the sink. So I'm going to dump in all of our sauce ingredients and our cornstarch and water slurry. I want to bring this up to a boil and let it simmer and get thick. Once my sauce is thickened like this, I'm going to dump in my chicken and my vegetables. Give all of this a really good stir. I'm going to turn off the heat, dump in my drained noodles, and then give this a really good stir. Make sure everything is all mixed together. You don't have to mix in your noodles, but I really like to. And it would be the same thing if you're using rice. You could mix in all of the rice with all of your meat and your vegetables at the same time too. Get a hot pad. And I think I have a really good ratio of vegetables, chicken, and noodles. And of course, my sauce. The nice thing about something like this, the sauce is so fast and easy to make. If you feel like you don't have the right ratio, you could just make another batch of sauce. Or if you like to have extra sauce on the side. It looks so good and it smells really good. Sprinkle on some green onions for garnish. And let's give it a bite. And I thought about adding in some frozen peas, but I think it looks delicious right the way it is. I'm trying to get a little bit of everything in here. Mm-hmm. So good. And just that one teaspoon of the chili flakes. Just the perfect amount of spice. And my vegetables are perfect. They're cooked just enough that they still have a little bit of bite, but they're not crunchy and they're not soggy either. And my teriyaki sauce is delicious. Something like this is so fast and easy to make. The noodles cook really fast and if you're doing it all at the same time, then it's all done at the same time. This teriyaki sauce is delicious with noodles. It's delicious with rice, any kind of vegetables, or maybe you don't want any vegetables. Just make the sauce with chicken. But I always like to get in extra vegetables wherever I can. And if you start out with a bigger pan, then you won't have to switch pans in the middle and make extra dishes for yourself. But that's okay. Let me know what you think if you make this recipe. I hope you do. It's such a delicious teriyaki chicken. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll see you on the next one.